Hello everyone and welcome to New Horizon U. Today we're diving into a fascinating journey through economic history and the psychology of money. Remember, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to subscribe for more insightful videos. Now let's unravel the mysteries of how our personal experiences shape our financial decisions. Have you ever wondered how differently each of us experiences the economy and money? It's like we're all reading the same book, but interpreting the chapters in our unique ways. Let's rewind to the Great Depression, an era that left a profound mark on global economic history. Picture this, it's 1929 and the Roaring Twenties have just crashed into a halt. Businesses are closing, people are losing their homes, and the once bustling streets are now filled with the echoes of uncertainty. This period, marked by poverty and despair, became a defining chapter in American history. But here's a twist. Not everyone's story during the Great Depression was the same. Take John F. Kennedy's family, for example. While many struggled, the Kennedy fortune grew, painting a stark contrast to the common narrative. This divergence in experiences isn't just about the rich and poor. It extends to all of us, influencing our attitudes towards risk, investment, and financial decision-making. Moving to the present, let's consider how our personal experiences continue to drive our financial decisions. Economists often picture us as rational beings, always making choices that maximize our gains. But let's face it, reality is much more complex. Take the lottery, for instance. Many low-income households spend a significant amount on lottery tickets despite struggling with savings. It might seem irrational at first, but if we delve deeper, it's a grasp at hope, a chance to experience the luxuries often out of reach. Studies have shown that our financial behaviors are deeply rooted in our early experiences. If you grew up during a time of high inflation, you might shy away from bonds. If you witnessed a booming stock market in your youth, you might lean towards investing in stocks. It's fascinating how our past shapes our present financial choices, often subconsciously. And now let's take a step back and think about the history of economic concepts themselves. Did you know that modern financial ideas are relatively new in the grand scheme of things? Currency, for example, only came into existence around 600 BC. And what about retirement? It's a concept that most of us take for granted today, but it's barely two generations old. The very tools we use to plan our financial futures, like 401ks and IRAs, are even younger. So when we struggle with financial decisions, it's not just personal, it's historical. We're all learning to navigate a world with economic concepts that are still evolving. Think of it this way, we're all students in the ever-changing classroom of economic life. Let's talk about a factor in financial success that's often overlooked, luck. Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Schiller once pondered about the exact role of luck in successful outcomes. It's a complex topic. On one hand, acknowledging luck feels like undermining hard work and skill. On the other, ignoring it can lead to a skewed understanding of success and failure. Imagine two siblings from the same household. Studies suggest that their incomes are more closely correlated than their heights or weights. This implies that much of our financial destiny may be shaped by the circumstances we're born into. Our culture, obsessed with success stories, rarely highlights the role of luck. But to truly grasp financial decision-making, we must acknowledge this unseen player on the stage of success. Bill Gates once said that success is a lousy teacher as it often masks the role of luck. This brings us to an essential point, focus on broad patterns rather than specific, extraordinary cases. History is filled with examples like John D. Rockefeller, whose disregard for certain legal norms might be seen as visionary or reckless depending on the outcome, which was in many ways down to luck. The key takeaway? Emulating the exact steps of successful figures like Warren Buffett doesn't guarantee similar outcomes because luck is a variable we can't control. Instead, look at broader patterns. For instance, studies show that people who manage their daily structures tend to be happier in their work. These are the kinds of observations that are more likely to be applicable and beneficial to our lives. The dangers of envy in financial decisions. And then there's envy, a powerful emotion in the world of capitalism. It can drive people to achieve great things, but it can also lead to reckless decisions. 
Consider the story of Rajat Gupta, a successful CEO who let envy push him into illegal insider trading, ultimately leading to a prison sentence. His desire to elevate his status from millionaire to billionaire overrode his judgment, proving that envy can blind us to the risks and moral boundaries. The lesson here is clear. Understanding when enough is enough is crucial. Constantly chasing more driven by envy can lead to decisions that might provide short-term gains but long-term regrets. It's essential to find balance and contentment with what we have, recognizing that the pursuit of everything often leads to the loss of much. Have you ever thought about how some people manage to amass fortunes but struggle to keep them? The story of Jesse Livermore, a renowned trader from the early 20th century, perfectly illustrates this. At the peak of his career, he was worth 100 million da, an astronomical sum for his time. His greatest triumph came when he bet against the stock market in 1929, earning the equivalent of $3 billion today. But the twist in Livermore's tale is both shocking and insightful. Despite his initial success, he eventually lost it all and tragically ended his own life. This brings us to a crucial understanding. Making money and keeping it are two very different challenges. While risk and optimism are vital in earning wealth, preserving it requires humility, fear, and a cautious approach. It's about recognizing the role of luck and the impermanence of success. Stories like Livermore's teach us that staying rich often requires more skill and discretion than becoming rich in the first place. Speaking of preserving wealth, let's consider the role of fear in our financial decisions. It might sound counterintuitive, but a healthy dose of fear can be beneficial. Michael Moritz, a successful venture capitalist, believes that fear of losing what you have can lead to more prudent and thoughtful decisions. This approach emphasizes perseverance and caution over reckless risk-taking. Entrepreneurs who succeed in the long run are those who don't wipe out, who view potential gains through the lens of potential losses. It's about balancing the pursuit of growth with the preservation of what's already been achieved. As we navigate our financial journeys, understanding the value of what we have and the risks of losing it can guide us to make smarter, more sustainable decisions. Let's shift gears and talk about Heinz Berggruen, an art collector who turned a $100 investment into a collection worth 100 million euros. His strategy, diversification. Berggruen didn't just focus on a few pieces. He amassed a wide variety of artworks, allowing a few winners to emerge over time. This approach, similar to an index fund, spreads risks and increases the chances of hitting a jackpot. The lesson here? Success isn't just about being right all the time. It's about ensuring that when you are right, it counts. This principle, known as the long tail, is applicable in various investment strategies. It reminds us that while failure is inevitable, the nature and impact of our successes are what truly matter. In essence, a few right choices can offset many wrong ones, highlighting the importance of diversified approaches in both art collection and financial investments. As we conclude today's exploration into the world of money and financial decision-making, remember that success in finance is intertwined with psychology. Acknowledging the role of luck, understanding the importance of preserving what you have, and adopting a diversified approach are key to navigating this complex landscape. Now, I'd love to hear from you. How do you approach financial decisions? What strategies have worked for you and what lessons have you learned? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found value in this video, please give us a like, subscribe for more insightful content, and share this with someone who might benefit from these lessons. At New Horizon U, we're committed to helping you navigate life's challenges and opportunities. Stay tuned for more, and as always, keep striving for your personal and financial growth. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.